Hello and welcome to the Congo Hour. We want to uh, thank you for watching. My name is Trippy Congo. Joined this evening with my dad, Sammy Congo. Pleasure, surprise to see him walk through the door on time. So um, I had my, my real co-host, uh, Sherry Dorsey Walker, all in line just in, just in case you want to show up around quarter or nine, but you're here on time, man. I, I'm thankful for that. Oh. <laughs> So that's what it was up, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sherry do it. <laughs> no, she was really here for the interview, but she was going to, since Wayne wasn't feeling well, she was going to you know, help me help me to co-host. But then you came, uh -oh. you came, through, the, came <laughs> through the door. So how was your weekend? My weekend was okay until was right it? now. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry Dwissy Walker kind of <laughs> didn't tell me the truth. Uh, she just she didn't want to deflate you. Know, I she understand. Didn't want to pop you yeah. Yeah, that's all. That's what that was. Wait till I interview her. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she will be on a little later on um, in the show. Just to talk about her campaign. We also had she was part of our uh, our cleanup yesterday. Our community oh, cleanup okay. we did it in our district and. She had people out there cleaning, and a lot of her uh, civic groups were there, so I'm sure she'll want to talk about that also. Uh, also, Brenda uh, Myrak is here. She's okay. here to talk about her campaign for the um, just for state auditor. Okay. And, um, and then our first interview is going to be we have a young man here who's talking about uh, his his talent show that's coming up. Oh, so he let's just get to, started. Uh, I'm anxious just to hear just, about. Let's just spread the word about <laughs> that. And then, as always, we have our uh, community news. We'll have our funeral announcements, and we have some. Uh, some birthday announcements also. Sounds great. All right. Well, welcome to the show. Thank Hello. you. Hey, thanks for coming. You want to uh, introduce yourselves and let the people know about your show? My name is Tyler Fassett, and the show that I'm working on is called Battles of the Talent for children ages 6 to 18. Okay. For singing, dancing, acting, and poetry, auditions will be held at RAMG Studios on Valley Road from 12 to 3. Where is, um, what's the address on Valley Road? You know 222 that? Valley Road. 222 Valley Road? Yes. Okay. And you're having auditions when? August the 30th. August the 30th. Okay, yes. so that's next? Saturday. Next Saturday. Yeah. At, at what time? 12 to 3. Okay. So is this your uh, your first talent show that you're putting together? Yes. Uh, what made you want to do it? Because there's so much violence going on in the streets with children and too many children of my generation getting killed. Okay. And too, it's too much going on. So I decided to put together a talent show for children my age, and that's in my age bracket. Mm -hmm. So I just went out my way and did it. All right. Just for the kindness of my heart, basically. Okay. So who do you have with you tonight? My grandmother. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Grandma. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> you want to uh, introduce yourself? And yes. You must be very proud of, of your grandson. Yes. Um, it's kind of hard for me to just stay a level. Oh, I'm like, okay. my heart is like up with the Lord right yeah, now I'm because sure um, I'm so proud of Tyre. Mm -hmm. And first of all, my name is Robin Fassett. Um, Tyre has been a good child. I've had him since he came home from the hospital. And he's grown up to be a very productive young man in the system as far as the children are concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, all the cho He's the Pied Piper. Okay. The children follow him and they do listen to him. Mm -hmm. And he has them to the point where if they see a piece of paper, and there's a trash can on the street. They know, pick that paper up because we right. have to live here. Okay. You know, so it, it's really good and I'm very proud of him mm -hmm. because he doesn't give me much trouble at all. All right. So no, he doesn't. It makes me very proud. <laughs> I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, Tyre? 16. Oh, what school do you go to? William Penn. William Penn. What grade are you going to be in? 10th. 10th grade. You yes. start school tomorrow? No, or? Tuesday. Tuesday? Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, where's Valley Road? I'm not too sure yet. Because is I that the one in Hocastle? I I'm, this is the first time I'm hearing, hearing about Valley Road. Um, okay. And the instructions that they gave that it was by Banning Park. I Banning Park. So oh. I'm not too familiar with the area okay. of Banning Park. So but we'll go well, on online or Google mm, it and find out I exactly where it is. There, and from where we live, I live near PS, like on the side. So it's mm. they, my GPS said it's 14 minutes away. Okay. So it's not too far. Yeah, it's about the same. No, people can catch the dark. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be next Saturday. Yes. At what time again? 12 to 3. Okay. What, what kind of um, talent are you looking for? Honestly, it's not what I'm looking for. It's mm. to what people have. Okay. 
So, I mean, anybody can come, mm -hmm. basically. So you said you're having auditions, so. Yes. So what's next after the audition? Audition is gonna be a showcase where they mm -hmm. compete against each other as we're, we're gonna get through this first, the audition, then we're gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit down with my host and my hype man. Okay. And then we're gonna figure out how we're gonna put everything together and how we're gonna have different categories and age brackets because actually the people that I have mentoring is the host he's mentoring, I guess, the actors with me because I act myself. Okay. So we're gonna be mentoring that half and then like the dancers I have a judge on the panel that does dancing mm -hmm. and then music I found my old vocal teacher and he's willing to come so we're gonna have mentors throughout that and then we're gonna have we're gonna be responsible for the people that were mentoring okay so after that I'm trying to take it to Penn like have competitions between William Penn and Howard we're gonna take competitions in different areas and then for the grand show I'm work, trying to work on getting a nice stage where people can, so they can come perform and stuff. Mm -hmm. Just to have fun for the family. And then the people yeah. that did get eliminated, they get to come back a show everyone would take and do. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna be like, mm -hmm. we're gonna have <coughs> competitions in front of audience also. So it's not our choice who gets off the show and who, you know, mm -hmm. we're gonna have the people's voice. And also a flash mob. Okay. So um, <laughs> since all the children love to dance, uh -huh. you know, so uh, the grand finale will be just a flash mob. All they're right. going to jump up and they're going to do their thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, but um, we have to make sure we have planned it first. Everything right. planned and then have mm -hmm. the moves That's down right. because yeah. the show, the actual show, I'm trying to work on ending it at least near the middle of October mm -hmm. because I don't want to really have to do it around Halloween. I need candy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, I'm proud of you. I understand. Thank I can you. see why you, your grandmother is so uh, so happy and proud of you. Mm -hmm. It's a young man who just saw some some um, thing, things that you didn't like in the city, and you decided yes. to do something positive. So and I, I have to also have people that. working on my background also mm -hmm. with me. Like I have people behind me. Like the Killer Wear movie is coming out that I'm featured in. I mm -hmm. just got the text about a couple days ago. Okay, it should be coming out spring 2015 with Joshua and the director, JD, and then my father, he has his own clothing line coming out and they're sponsoring it. And his new album comes out called King of Delaware. So that, we're working on that also. So it's a lot of things coming out. All right. I'm proud of both of them. All right, that's right. You know, you are to be, I guess, commended mm -hmm. in today's world to recognize the need mm -hmm. and to step forward and just at 16 years old, to take yeah. the position that you're taking is is, is just remarkable. And um, I can guarantee you that the Congo Hour will be following you. And somehow I think that on your grand finale, we should be able to do something. It may not be at 8 o'clock, but there are other openings mm -hmm. okay. on Channel 28 that that grand finale may be able to be shown okay. and uh, we have to work it out talk to folks yes. and I'm not sure it can be but I think something so wonderful is what you're doing I hope that it would catch on and yes. that we have many many other people to recognize your importance and the importance of what you're doing more than your importance mm -hmm. and 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 can that really just reach other people your age and we can find a different way to use our talents, yes. find a different way to use our spare time. Yeah. And, I, and I think that if this goes over great for you, Wilmington will find that they've got a partner mm -hmm. in trying to reduce crime. So yes. my hat's off to you. Thank and you I, so much. And I really wanna thank you as a young man mm -hmm. because you care about this community and we need more people like you. Thank you. Yes. And, and these are the types of stories that need to be covered like yes, by, right. by the news journal. That's absolutely um, right. Like it's always it always seems like the news journal just paints a, a picture of Wilmington that just it's just so negative and it's yes. all about the shootings and yeah, the killings yeah, and every time we get an update from from Delaware Online it's about something negative. Mm -hmm. But this is a um, this is a story that needs to be covered. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that they don't do any type of you know positive stories, mm -hmm. but they just need more. It needs to be more balanced. Mm -hmm. So, um, like my dad just said, hats off to you. We're going to definitely you. support you anybody that we can. Now, how are you promoting this besides, you know, just um, I'm using here. social 
Okay. Um, as of right now, and then I have a couple of people doing it, but mm-hmm. I mean, like on I Facebook, got, so people. Uh, yes, on it's on Facebook. Okay. But also, I need more adults to do it because on my Facebook, I have mainly younger people my age right. that knows about it. But usually, people will call me be like, "Hey, I want to go," but then again, do your parents know that you're coming, mm-hmm. or you can't just come? You have to have a parent, right. so, or you have to have some form of ID, school ID, just mm-hmm. to let us know who you are. Okay. But I mean, as of right now, we need more promotion. That's mm-hmm. the reason why I came. How can people contact you on Facebook? Um, my name Tyre Facet, T Y A I R E. Last name Facet, F is in Frank, A S S E T T. Okay. And I guess follow the show on Twitter at Battles of the Talent, B O T, B O T T underscore three O two. And you have a phone number that people can call. Yes, if you want auditions or want to know more about the show, you can call me at area code eight five six eight nine nine six three seventeen. Okay, I say that number one more time, please. The number again is 856-899-6317. Okay. Is it possible to have that number flashed? No. Can't do that right uh, now. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, the equipment isn't working. So. Okay. All right, well, I'll tell you, you're, I'm going to shake your hand. <laughs> uh, you, you're just a great young man. Thank you. And, uh, and I think your leadership is necessary in this town and I hope that it can spill over to many 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 young men just like you you. and I hope that this channel 28 gives young men like you I just hope there's a lot of young men that's watching or parents that's watching Mm -hmm. that can somehow come to the audition and 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 get an opportunity to to see what fun really is and that people at your age can have fun and 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 grow up you know through experiences like that because it's uh, what's going on now is not fun it's not no yeah and so when you read about and hear about the tragedies that go on in our community but to have an opportunity to have an audition with you instead of that tragedy, uh, we ought to try to get as many young men, get the city, the county, the mm-hmm. state, all kind of folks that are interested. They say they're interested in, in, in preventing crime. I think this is one of the first steps toward it. That's so amazing. again, I want to thank you. And thank we'll you be, again. We'll be, you'll be hearing from us. Okay. <laughs> and we okay. thank you very much. Um, mm-hmm. For having my son and myself here because what we're seeing now we should not be seeing. Our future lies within the children and if the children are not being taught properly they need to have an avenue where they can come and know that it's secure and it's safe and you don't have to worry Mm -hmm. because when you come through the doors it's a place of happiness and peace and expressing yourself. And if you're angry, you want to express yourself, put the pen to the paper, and that would carry you a long way. Just read what's coming from your mind and coming from your heart, and put that on paper, and you'll be surprised where it will carry you. All right, wise words. Yeah. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna take a very quick break, and we'll, we'll be right back with uh, Councilwoman Sherry Dorsey Walker. I'm tired of playing church stage players heading to the Baby Grand Theater Saturday, September 13th in Wilmington, Delaware with two shows matinee showing at 2 o'clock p.m. evening showing at 7 o'clock p.m. Tickets are just $30. For more information, please call 1-800-37-GRAND. But you got to bring your own get loose juice. Well, girl, you know what they say. Gin will make you sin, but rum will make you... Ray Ray! (laughs) All right, welcome back. We hope that you enjoyed our first interview. So who do we have on next? Well, we have a courageous, dynamic, wonderful, I got not afraid of anything, my kind of people, young lady. All right, I agree. Sherry Dorsey Walker is back. Welcome back. 
Thank you. Thank you for having me. First, before we even get started, I just want to say thank you to the funeral home, to Trippy, to Wayna, and to all of you for coming out on yesterday and cleaning the Hedgeville community, the Hedgeville Civic Association leadership, President Brandy Reed, Vice President, all the leadership just came out in full force and the community came mm -hmm. out together to help clean up their area. So I just want to say thank you to you for helping to organize that and orchestrate it and that's, that's the first of many. We've done that before, but it was really nice to partner with the Congo Funeral Home yeah, and make that a, happen. We had a really good time. We have to thank um, Parkway also yes, for opening up their doors. Definitely. Um, Parkway us. Academy. Yeah, Parkway yes. Academy. They, um, yes. they were right there for us. It was, it was a wonderful event. Um, yes. People in the community were there. People who didn't even know about it when they saw us cleaning, mm -hmm. they wanted to join in that's and, right. and help. So we had a great time. So I, I want to thank you. Although they should have known because we did put flyers yeah, no, out. Heard yes. You put out like a thousand of them. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we don't up. do fake small. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice. I'm looking forward to next week when all the uh, volunteers and the children who yes. help, we're going to go to uh, Dorney Park next yes. Saturday. So I'm sure they're going to enjoy that. But it was nice. It was. Uh, it wasn't too hot out. No, like it, it was a perfect day to get out there and just clean up and clean up. And the right. kids really enjoyed it. Yes. And they knew why they were doing it. Exactly. Of course, um, Dorney Park has something to do with it, but a lot of them were there just because they wanted to you know, help clean up their neighborhood. Right. And it was, it was really good to hear them say that and talk about it and really just show, show, like showing the initiative. Right. And when they could have just walked by some trash and still going on to, you know, to the park, but they didn't. They, they, were, they were serious about right. it. So that, well, that it was good to see. see. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. does. Because now what they do is when they're walking, they'll pick up the trash. Right, right. exactly. Right. Yep. And they, mm -hmm. they know how important it is to, you know, to share that experience with their friends. Exactly. So it, was, it was nice. So I want to I wanna thank you. You and Wayne have pretty much put it together. I know a lot of times we get all the credit but it was you know it was Sherry and Wayna and the Hitchville Community uh, Civic Group yes. Parkway they, they you guys really did it so I just want to thank you for helping. Well, special thank you to Miss Wayna who is not feeling well today but we want to make sure we yeah, thank yeah. you for yeah. a job well done and for always supporting our efforts. Yeah. All right you want to yes. um, talk about to clean up some more you want to talk about your campaign well your dad <laughs> we, we need to clarify something yes, first okay yeah, he so it. he said that i didn't tell the truth the <laughs> truth is he said and i want the community to know this he said the next time i'm here we're going to do sammy's corner we're going to have you on and i am going to question you so when i saw him come through the door i said okay so i won't be co-hosting because you will be doing sammy's corner <laughs> right it. yeah see that Ah, uh, well, here we are, <laughs> so get ready. Amen. <laughs> so before we get started, you want to just uh, let people know who, who may not you know, what, you know, yes. know why you're here and what you're running for? And yes. Okay. Well, currently I'm in city council in the, in the 6th district, and I'm running for the state senate in the 3rd district, and really excited to be in this position. This position is ordained as far as I'm concerned. I look at this as ministry for me. And one of the things that I do is I look at how I can help others. This isn't about power, privilege, and prestige for me. This is about helping God's people and moving the kingdom forward. So with that in mind, I'm going to have Mr. Congo go right into what he wanted to ask me publicly. <laughs> sure. I can only say that there are very few people that I have, uh, I guess, had an opportunity to get to know that I've been impressed as much as you have impressed me. Thank you. And it has nothing to do with anything except your commitment to what you said you was going to do. And you have done far beyond what I expected of you as a council person. And then when I heard that you were willing to, and to uh, uh, go out and even further that because you, you, you understand the needs so much that you wanted to uh, give the, the area in which you live an opportunity to, to, to kind of be, I, I guess, I don't know the right word here, but that you would give leadership to see that they got everything that they possibly could as much as you did as a city council person, mm -hmm. then I think they will be blessed. Thank you. And so I'm excited to see you uh, to, and, and many other people take these kind of challenges because it, it, it takes a lot. It does. You know, to go out here and commit yourself to such a challenge when you're serious. Yes. And there is no question in my mind that you are serious. None, none, none. 
And so, so, so many of us, as you say, run for prestige or a job or whatever it might be. But in no way does any of that enter my mind when I think of you. Thank you. I, I think that we have been, as a city, blessed. And, 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 and I'm not a holy Joe, but I think that the good Lord sent you mm. to help to work with us in trying to make this a better place to live for everybody. And, and, and you recognize that it's not only the city that will make this change, but it goes to Dover. Correct. And, 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 and that you have decided that you want to go to Dover to open the eyes of the folk in Dover mm -hmm. as much as you have opened the eyes of the people in Wilmington. And, and the commitment to your community to keep them involved mm -hmm. to me. You know, <clears throat> when I fought so hard early in the game, of course, Cherry and the other girls grabbed the ball and kept on going. But to keep Channel 28 alive, yes. to me, was an opportunity to keep our community alive cool. with the information mm -hmm. so that we don't die mm -hmm. um, um, without good information. You know, we can just wither away uh, if we don't get that. And so I want to be able to be, a, to be a part of people like you, mm -hmm. people knowing more about you. So I want to know what are some of the things that, that you have done that you can not only say I was a councilman, a council lady, mm -hmm. <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> but, uh, and, and that's important. You know, so, so, so many times we find positions that we just think men are supposed to have. Mm. But it is clear in my mind that you have filled the position as a lady and have done as much and more mm. than most folks. So just identify some of those things that I know that I want the public to know about you. Excellent. Well, there was a situation where one of my constituents was facing foreclosure. And what I ended up doing, obviously I prayed about it first, and I talked to the Mayor's Office of Constituent Services. We found two grants for this constituent. I went to court with the constituent, and the judge said, never in the history of me serving have I ever seen an elected official come in here to save a home. And the judge went on to say that you should be really you should feel very lucky that you have this person as your elected official and I said well this is what I believe needs to be done we need to go above and beyond the call of duty and yes that wasn't my job but I took it as it is my position to do what was necessary to save that home and I would do that again for any of my constituents whatever position that I'm in where I can help the next person I'm going to do that well that's wonderful um... And that's what I think it's really all about. You know, it's, it's, it's about how you give leadership to your community and you're able to place them in a, in, in a position where you are able to give them light that they don't know how to turn on. Mm -hmm. So when you went to court with that person was the kind of I, I guess support that normally folks don't get. Correct. So it gives them a greater visibility. It gives the judge a better support service, and 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 people will 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 grow as a result of having people like yourself. It's important that the community feels empowered. I can have all the power in the world, but if I don't empower the community that I'm servicing, then it doesn't make sense for me to be in this position. It should be about reaching back and helping the next person. It shouldn't be about me coveting the seat, getting the seat and then coveting it. It doesn't make sense. And how are we growing as a community if I'm staying in a position and I stay there and do nothing? And that's not to say no one is doing nothing. I'm just saying personally. So that's why in this position as a council person, I wanted to do all that I could to help the community. And then as a state senator, some of the things on which I would like to work is education. I'd like to also work to, yes, we've talked about minimum wage and we say that, yes, it's, in, it's imperative that we increase minimum wage. But why not? Why are we not looking at a livable wage in this state? Minimum wage. Can any of us live off minimum wage? 
could we pay our electric as well as our phone bill, as well as our car note and our car insurance? And so we're asking people to do a whole lot with very little. And then we say to our seniors, make the choice between your medicine and your electric bill. This is just an unfair dynamic. So as a country, we need to start doing a better job of taking care of those who took care of us. Mm -hmm. I just hope, I hope people realize the importance of supporting uh, Sherry on September the 9th, right? Yes. September the 9th, and not just taking it for granted that you know she's gonna win and other people are gonna go out and, and support you and vote for you, but people that are in that district who can support you to get out there and vote. Because uh, I, I just think, you, like my dad was saying, you're just gonna be such a blessing Thank to you. that many uh, more people. Um, so I just hope people come out and, and just take over, just like somebody just came in and just took over our show and took over the seat <laughs> right next to you. I guess he's, he's so in love with you and he's such a supporter, he just didn't even knock. I just heard footsteps. He just heard footsteps. Next thing I know, he's coming around to sit down. So I'm going to give him a few minutes to uh, to um, say a few words about you. So I guess he's not here to see me. He's never showing up just to say hi, Trippy. <laughs> so he saw you on that here. That is the dean. <laughs> That's the dean. <laughs> so, you know, you're going to be graded according to how the dean <laughs> says you're going to be graded. I've been doing so. this show about 15 years, and never has he ever come on and say sat next to me. So. <laughs> You're 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 a blessed lady, fortunate lady. I am. I am. I can't wait to, to get to your, to your level. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing today, Councilman? Oh, <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I'm I'm happy to join. Proud to join. Proud to support you. I think that you represent the future. Mm -hmm. I think that you have already shown by example what an elected official is supposed to do when I don't care what's happened since you've been in office in your district. You've been the person in front of all of us in, 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 in front of uh, all the other elected officials. You've been right there on point addressing it, the issue, the situation, providing the leadership and you've got a proven track record and you've been in office for a relatively short period of time. I'm supporting her because She's bright, she's involved, she's committed, she's sincere, she's educated, and she represents the future. If you look around the city and you look at all the players who are at the table now, everybody's around my age. Most of us are on the eve of retirement. And if we don't now start planning for the future, then the future is, is going to come up on us and we're not going to be prepared. The other is, be careful what you ask for. And I said to her in no uncertain terms when I supported her initially for councilwoman, I said, I want you to promise me that if you get elected, you won't limit yourself to just being a councilman. Councilwoman, excuse me. And I frankly had no idea that she was going to come out and run this soon, but I encouraged it. And I have to support it. And quite frankly, I think she's ready. And I'm going to repeat what, what I said on, on this show previously. You know, if you look back historically, they told Margaret Henry she couldn't beat Herman Jr. as a Republican. Well, she did. They told Jim Baker to wait on Dan Frawley. Jim Sill said, I'm not waiting. They told <coughs> Helene Keeley wait on Cash Young. She didn't wait. They told Barack Obama mm -hmm. to wait on Clinton. He didn't. So in the instant case with Councilwoman <coughs> Dorsey, Dorsey Walker, wait on what? Wait for what? If she feels as though she's ready to go, others feel she's ready to go, I certainly feel she's ready to go, then let's go. Um, the time is now, the time is right, and it's time for a change. She's been as visible and as active as, as any elected official over the last two years, and she's got a, a record of integrity. And so I am very, very pleased to support her, and I encourage other people to come out. Don't run your mouth. Don't sit home and talk about, that's my girl, I love her, did it, did it. Go vote. Get up on September the 9th and go vote. Take your cousins, your aunts, your friends, Go come out and let's get this young lady elected. You know, I've never heard him talk that way about many people. So, 
it is, I'm like trippy, it is sort of an honor to have him come on the show and to really direct our community to his experience to say, this is the way to go. And, and I've never seen him play games. You know, everybody knows that Jay's a straight shooter, he's honest, and so uh, coming from him, I think that should mean a lot to you and the community. It should prevent them from uh, having question about what they need to do. And I, my hat's off to you. I'm just so glad to know that Jay's on your team. Oh, yes, definitely. And he has so, been since day one. <laughs> but I'm very grateful to Councilman Jay Street for, one, supporting me in the manner in which he has and just having my back through this whole process. He talks to me extensively about right and wrong, and I do listen. He, he laughs at me because he says, you know, I think you really pay close attention because now you're running so soon after me telling you don't limit yourself. And I don't think it was limiting myself to the council. I think that whenever God calls you to move to the next stage in your life, then that's when you answer the call. So I was called to do the council job. And I enjoy doing that job, but I believe that it's time for me to do another job to enlarge the territory to enhance the kingdom and the work that needs to be done for the third senatorial district. And I thank you for your support, and you as well, and the community for your support. It's an overwhelming amount of support that I've been receiving from the community. I'm getting requests for signs, calls. It's just amazing how well you're receiving my candidacy. So I want to just thank you. Thank you, thank you. And if you'd like to request a sign, feel free to reach me at 302-777-3712, or you can email me at dorsey 4 senate at gmail.com. Again, that's Dorsey, four spelled out, F-O-R, senate at gmail.com. And what I'd like to just end with is, I'm not asking you to vote for me. I'm trying to earn your support and earn your vote. So prayerfully, that's what will happen on September the 9th, that I would have earned your vote and you will go and vote for me. Thank you and may God bless you. All right, and just before we go to break, I just want uh, you to tell people, I know we've been talking about it the last few weeks, can you just give people the boundaries so if they, for some reason, they're not sure if they're in your area? Correct. So they can support you on the 9th? It goes from East 17th Street, 80% of the west side, up to and including west, a portion of Westover Hills, it goes up to Chestnut Run, excuse me, Chestnut Run, and up by the Lancaster Pike where the path mark is, mm -hmm. and then the Maryland Avenue area out by Richardson Park okay. and Banning Park area as well. So it's a lot of territory. It's 40,000 people, and I'm just really excited about the opportunity to serve you, the people. Okay. All right. So we'll see you next week. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a quick break and come back with uh, Tom's Corner. Okay. All right. Right on. All right. County Exec Tom Gordon will be next with uh, with a special guest. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. We have a uh, special edition of uh, Sammy's Corner. It's not going to be Sammy's Corner. It's going to be Tom's, Tom's Corner. Tom's Corner. Okay. Uh, a very special edition of County Exec Tom Gordon's Corner on uh, the Congo Hour this evening. He has a, a young lady who is running for a state auditor, and she's going to come on and, and talk about her her platform and. Our campaign and let us know why we should should, should all support it. So it's all yours. Well, Mr. Let me Gordon. say hi to Sammy, his young, <laughs> young son Trippy. It's been a while and I've gotten a lot of calls about coming back on my show. Uh, and uh, like you know, I, I figure I better start coming back on so people I think know where great. I'm at and, and <laughs> know how you're doing. Uh, we're doing great. Uh, I, we have had several calls and sometimes I've went places to eat or I've been in stores and they said when's Tom gonna take his corner back <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I'd call you and let you know well but there's I'm not a lot of debates going on and it's just an opportunity to meet the aud uh, auditor candidate and I she would love to talk to you and, and she's honored to be here with you and talk to you about her platform and her name well, is I, I was very excited in hearing her talk last time I heard her on uh, Darius's show. Yeah, last week. It? Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, how you got here and how you're willing to stay here and 
You can tell us all about it. Sure. Well, yeah, again, uh, Sammy, Trippy, thank you so much for having me on tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, again, I'm Brenda Mayrak. I'm running for state auditor. I'm, I'm a Democrat. I do have a primary coming up on September 9th. And, uh, you know, as, as you said, I, you know, I, I live here in the city of Wilmington. Um, mm -hmm. I am a small business owner. My law firm is here in, in the city of Wilmington also. Okay. And uh, my law practice focuses on auditing and audit defense. So I think I have the right experience to be state auditor. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as, as I was saying, you know, I, I grew up in Wisconsin and in Texas. And I first came to Delaware as a freshman at the University of Delaware. And, uh, you know, I come from, from pretty modest roots. And I worked hard in school and was fortunate enough to, to earn a scholarship to UD. And right. I got just an amazing education there. I had so many opportunities. Uh, tried to take advantage of everyone and uh, you know just really got got involved here in Delaware mm -hmm. and uh, you know as, apart from just leaving to go back to law school um, you know I've, I've been here ever since so so you have your own law firm so you're, mm -hmm. you know it seemed like you would be doing you know okay for yourself so what made you want to run, run for state auditor well really just uh, a desire to give back okay. I mean I think I think the auditor's office is underutilized right now mm -hmm. I think it, it's understaffed it's not working the way it should be working and uh, I think with my skills and experience my law practice you mm -hmm. know running my own business also um, you know just management experience that I've had in the private sector uh, I think it's a way that I can really give back and okay. make our state and our city a better place to live can, can you uh, explain to us what your uh, responsibilities will be once you are state auditor? Sure, state auditor has a you know a pretty focused scope of responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's to audit state revenue and spending, okay, and and also property taxes that go to local school districts, okay. and make sure that that money is not being wasted mm -hmm. and is being spent properly. And you know I've been I was out this weekend knocking on doors uh, here in the city, talking to people, saying you know I'm a small business owner. If I'm wasting money in my business, then that's money right out of my pocket. Right. And I know people are trying to meet their budgets mm -hmm. and uh, people treat their own money with great care. Mm -hmm. And really mm -hmm. the state of Delaware and the local school districts need to treat our tax dollars with that same level of care. And that's where the state auditor can come in and really, really play a big role okay. in making sure that that gets done. Okay. Right. You have so many statewide candidates that come out of Wilmington and forget about Wilmington and I mm -hmm. think she's going to be different. Gonna so tell me again how those tax dollars get spent. Uh, I'm not sure I understand you know will they be uh, when they get in shape when you get in there will yeah, they do. Yeah, you mentioned something about um, tax dollars for the school district or something. What would you just say about, about Right well I mean I think First is, are we collecting all this, the tax dollars that we're owed? Okay. So, it, you know, from, from the state's perspective, are we mm -hmm. actually collecting all the revenue that's owed to the state? Okay. And, and I think that's an important question to ask before mm -hmm. we raise taxes or we consider raising taxes. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think that we are right now? Um, well, I, I mean, I have to get in there and start mm -hmm. and start looking around. But, okay. I, you know, I, I, I would imagine, uh, you know, we have a state auditor who's been there for 25 years. Okay. He... When he started the job in 1989, he had 57 people on his staff. Now he's down to 14, but the state audit, uh, the state budget has more than quadrupled in size. So he's got one fourth of the staff and four times the money. Uh -huh. So if you do the math, mm -hmm. we're, we're going in the wrong direction. And okay. uh, you know, so I, I think making sure that we have the staff to actually do the job, mm -hmm. I, I have to imagine that improvements uh, can be found and can be Okay. So, you know, that, that's part of it, is making sure the office has the resources that it needs, uh, making sure that those resources are not used in a political way, in mm -hmm. an inappropriate way. I mean, you think about it, using tax dollars to fund an audit that's politically motivated is completely inappropriate to right. me, and, and, and I won't do it. It's not, it's not fair, uh, and it, it's a waste of money. So mm -hmm. that has to stop. Um, but really, you know, it's looking at the revenue side and then looking at the spending side. And you know, the first priority is, is there waste, fraud, and abuse, and, and making sure that that stops. But then I think there's also a, a, an efficiency component. Are we actually spending the money um, you know, as well as we can? Is, mm -hmm. is it as effective, as efficient a, as it can be? And, and so that's what I look at. And you know, understanding that there's, there's a lot of work to be done in the office. I've got to hire people. I've got to fill those positions. You know, I, I have to think that there are 11 qualified Delawareans uh, you know, reflecting the diversity of our state who, who want those jobs. 
they're good state jobs, stable state jobs. And, and, I, and I'll be looking for people who are qualified to do that work and, and want to dig in and help. Okay. So, so what about people who maybe, I guess I'm going to play devil's advocate and say that, well, she's trying to grow government. Well, I think it's a matter of getting the right size. Okay. So every state agency has to do more with less. Mm -hmm. I have no expectation that my staffing would go back to 57 people. Okay. That's, that's unrealistic. Okay. But that makes sense. the office should have 25 people. Mm -hmm. It's got 14 right now. In order to so, do, like you said, their job efficiently, right? Right. right. And, right. Okay. and if you, you, know, you think about it, you can cut a, a regulator like the auditor has an important role to play. You cut that office too much, then the investigations aren't getting done. Right. Then okay. money's not actually being saved. Money mm -hmm. might be wasted. Right. So it's a it's a matter for an office like, you know, you think about, you know, we've heard about the IRS recently in the news. Mm -hmm. um, it's been cut so far that they can't perform the audits to make sure that people are actually complying. Mm -hmm. um, and the auditor's office is kind of the same way. We want to have the right size auditor's office right. doing the job the right way. Okay. So do you have a, um, well, Dad, do you have any other questions? Or Tom, do you have anything else you want to say to her? Mr. Yeah, I, I guess uh, uh, seeing you on Darius's show, I had never heard of you before. What makes you feel that you can really win? Tell me why you think you can win. That's well, a crazy question. That, but. No, it's a fair. It's a fair question. <laughs> I mean, I'm running against a, lo a longtime incumbent. I, I think he's had his chance to do the job. I think it's time for a change. Um, mm -hmm. I think even even in the private sector companies switch their auditor every five to seven years just to make sure that you've got fresh eyes and a fresh right, look right. at things. Yeah, um, you know, I, the Democratic Party has, has run good people for this office before, but I can tell you I got started earlier. I announced last December. I filed in January. I have been running hard for eight months. I am all right. over the state. I, you know, I think I'm, I'm working hard, um, you know, and basically picking up the support <laughs> that, that I need to. And, and I and I think uh, you know I hope that that hard work pays off. Um, you know, people have said to me, you know, you know I'm, I'm endorsed by the state party, Emily's list. Um, I just picked up um, some key labor union endorsements recently. Um, the, the Delaware Building Trades and Construction Council, the Delaware State Education Association, the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists, and people have said, well, you've got all this support. You know, do you feel like you have an edge? I said, not at, not at all. It makes me work even harder mm -hmm. because so many people have placed their confidence and their trust in me. You know, I'm, I'm just working harder. But, you know, really, I need people to go out and vote mm -hmm. on September 9th. Um, I do have a primary to get through, and then I need people to vote on November 4th right. because, you know, Democratic turnout, uh, you know, particularly turnout in the city drops off when it's not a presidential year. Yeah. And, and that, that hurts. That hurts us. Mm -hmm. So need the vote. Do you need volunteers? Absolutely. Uh, if if uh, if they want to volunteer, how can they reach you? Well, um, my website is a good way, mayrac.com. Uh, it's on, on the sign here, mayrac.com, or my phone number, which is 302-588-6343, uh, 302-588-6343. Uh, I've got one one person on my, my paid staff, mm -hmm. and, and she's working really hard. And every everyone else is a volunteer on my team. And she came by herself tonight. I mean, she's yeah. She's I, I, I mean, in, in order to pull this off, oh, you got to have help. a lot yeah. of volunteers. She's yeah. doing well. Absolutely. You know, so up and down the state. I yeah. was at an event down at Diggy Burris's farm Friday night. Friday night. Mm -hmm. And there were with all the farmers, our farmer friends. Okay. And she's picking up. How are you making out down state? I'm doing well. We had a, we had a, a brunch in Sussex County today, and we had uh, 60 people there. So great. Yeah, I think yeah. things are going well. Well, I I I, uh, I, I guess the trip he's going to get me. I'm I've been talking too much tonight, but he's got a couple things to do over there. So maybe uh, Tom can get you back on his corner to give you uh, some more time if you sure want it. I'd love to. And, Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be back on again. Okay. Sure. You want. Thank you very much. Yeah, and thank it was you. an honor having you come in today. I know. Well, you, you, you know, when you say jump, I say yeah. oh, hi. So. <laughs> we're going to take a short break, Trip, or? Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with uh, the community news and our death notices.
final announcements. Uh, first, we have Miss Lydia Brown, age 53, who departed this life August the 11th. Her services were on Friday at the Congo Funeral Home on 24th and Market Streets, and her burial took place in the Silverbrook Cemetery. Miss Rosa Marie Williams, age 80, who departed this life August the 14th. Her funeral services were yesterday at the East Iron Fair Baptist Church, and her burial took place in the Grace Lawn Memorial Park. Dr. Michael Anderson, Sr., age 46, departed this life August the 15th. His funeral services were yesterday at the Mount Sinai Baptist Church, and his burial took place in the Grace Lawn Memorial Park. Mr. Brandon Wiggins, age 26. He parted this life August the 19th. His funeral services will be on Tuesday at 12 noon at the Ezon Mount Carmel United Methodist Church, 800 North Walnut Street. Viewing will be from 10 to 11.45 only, and his burial will take place in the Grace Lawn Memorial Park. Mr. Willie G. Threats, age 75. Departed this life August the 19th. His funeral services will be on Thursday, August the 28th at 1 p.m. at the Congo Funeral Home on 201 North Gray Avenue. Viewing will be from 11 to 1245 only, and his burial will take place in the Grace Lawn Memorial Park. Mr. William Scales, age 66, who departed this life August the 21st. His funeral services will be on Friday, August the 29th at 11 a.m. at the Rock of Ages Baptist Church, 28 Meadowbrook Avenue in Belvedere. Viewing will be from 9 to 10.45 only, and his burial will be in the Delaware Veterans Cemetery. Mr. William Hackett, Jr., age 52, departed this life August the 20th. His funeral services will be on Saturday, August the 30th at 10 a.m. at the Congo Funeral Home on 24th and Market Streets. Viewing will be from 9 to 10, and his burial will be in the Silverbrook Cemetery. Our funeral services will be announced for Mr. William Banks, age 88, who departed this life on August the 9th. Funeral services will also be announced for Mr. Donald Greenwich, age 67, who departed this life on August the 14th. Our services will be announced for Mr. Melvin Johnson, age 79, who departed this life on August the 18th. Our services will also be announced for Mr. Robert Lee, age 71, who passed away on August the 20th. Services will be announced for Miss Corvette Brown, age 60, who passed away on August the 22nd. And services will also be announced for Little Miss Autumn Milligan, age four, who passed away on August the 23rd. And that does conclude all of our funeral announcements. If you have any questions, please call us at the funeral home at 652 8887. Also, you can go to our website at www.congofuneralhome.com for all this information. All right, we have a, uh, a birthday announcement that we want to on um, that I want to make. I want to say happy birthday to one of our team members at the funeral home. I'm going to say happy birthday to Miss uh, Tony. So happy birthday, Miss Tony. We do have a picture of her that we're going to show. There she is. Happy birthday, Miss Tony. That's from all of us from the from your team. Also, just as far as on community announcements, there's going to be a notice of public hearing for the Peninsula Compost Company a renewal of beneficial use uh, determination. It's going to be on Thursday, August the 27th at 6:30. It's going to be at the Rose Hill Community Center, uh, room C119. Uh, That's 19 Lamson Lane in Newcastle. For more information, please call uh, 654-4782. That's Lee Jarman. Once again, you can call 654-4782. And they're just stressing that your presence is needed uh, to help the older problems in that community. All right, that does do it for our show. We want to thank you so much for watching. And God willing, we'll see you next Sunday.